On today's show, Iron Banner drama runs rampant. Weapon Balance has gone live with the Scout taking the new top spot. And 3.2 million daily players. All that and more coming up. You're listening to Destiny the Show. Welcome, Guardian. Did he, did you, 3.2 million players daily. Did you see this? Yeah, that's awesome. That is ridiculous. Like, even still, that's from this past week. Not launch week. Not, not like during the hype moments, but a month after the game's release. I find that to be ridiculous. Little side note here. In the last three weeks, more players have been online in Destiny than during the same span for Halo 3 and Halo Reach combined. Now, I know Halo 3 and Reach were only Xbox 360, but, dude, everybody played Halo 3 back in the day. This is a sweet stat. Yeah, this is really good news for the Destiny community, and all the haters out there, you're being left in the dust, and we've stopped caring about your critiques. So we're enjoying our game, and the numbers show it. Yeah, like... (laughs) It's nice to know. I was a little worried they were going to not put out like numbers for us because it's been a little while and I know people it's almost nice that the company holds on to the population numbers like this instead of having the players be able to check it all the time. I know like the old Halo folks were like getting on Halo charts each day and they're like, "Oh, where is everybody?" <laughs> have not having like that accessible all the time is kind of nice, but it's also good to know like I'm not the only one good i didn't think so the tower is usually pretty full but uh it's just nice to know we've got buddies hanging around who are enjoying the same experience so we've... i hope they give us numbers after a year at least oh that yeah would be nice like see what the numbers are still because you know that's what really counts you know one year two years see how i only see this growing like as we get further with more expansions and more content within the world i only see it improving and that's i think the beauty of like this game has a good foundation. We sort of talked about that, I think, all the way back during the beta time, didn't we? Like, the gunplay itself, good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I just think, you know, since gaming in general is becoming more popular in, like, the real world or, like, in everyday life than it was, you know, 10 years ago, then it's obviously it's going to increase. But this is just good news. I've thought about it. If there was a single shooter that I could introduce a casual friend to, or even let's say like my, my test is my sister, who's not a gamer. If there was a shooter, I'd want to like start her on. I think destiny sort of hits the perfect spot because you've got PVE that is got this nice long gradual curve that they can learn on. And then you could toss them into PVP, which isn't like abusively difficult. You know what I'm saying? This game hits sort of that wide range of, like, experienced FPS players. Yes, you can go do Vault of Glass on hard and get your face kicked in by all these difficult things. But at the same time, players who are totally new to shooters on the console, I can't think of a better, like, jumping-off point game, you know? Yeah, I think this would be great because every other shooter is, like, competitive or it's a war simulator. I'm thinking Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, Battlefield, all that kind of stuff. And some people might not like that and, you know, they want to be immersed in a new world and i think destiny has something to offer for any type of player and that's good and it's like a community experience from the start like you wouldn't give now sanic plays a lot of shooters so that's a bad example but like (laughs) sanic's first time playing a shooter you wouldn't be like hey go play the single player on cod you know i'm saying that's just not a great experience yeah i wouldn't give my worst enemy that torture yeah because that's just terrible instead you and two other friends could literally complete the story which is your tutorial Together, with people feeling like you're getting a community experience rather than here's your on-the-rails kind of experience. All right, I've derailed us so far. Let's get into the news. News! All right, our patch hotfix has gone live. Weapon balance changes are here. Diddy, do you want to read these changes or shall I? Uh, go ahead. I'll provide my comments as you go along. Sounds good. Okay. Bungie has announced that a new hotfix for Destiny has gone live October 14th. That's today. And here are the update notes. And the patches live, by the way. I played this morning. 
They fixed a bug where the Valkyrie 05X ship was the same as the Aurora Lance. I had no idea about this. <laughs> yeah, I heard about this. It was, I think, isn't like the Aurora Lance, like, one of the limited edition ones and people are like well <laughs> it's the same as know. the valkyrie <laughs> yeah exactly i don't know something like that yeah yeah it is it's the limited edition for the the guardian edition <laughs> that people pre-ordered and like yeah people were like i can get the same ship without pre-ordering that's dumb but yeah that was not intended okay glad they fixed that jeez i would have been a little salty about that uh class fixes uh the titan unbreakable Fixed an issue with the perk granting more agility than intended. Sorry, Titans. Unbreakable. Just cut a nerf. And Warlocks. Brimstone. Perk can now uh, activate if the player is airborne. I don't even remember what Brimstone is, dude. And I play a Warlock. I'm going to look at I this real fast. I don't play either of these classes, so I have no idea what this means. It doesn't, I think Unbreakable, yeah. I've seen... Okay, so, like, obviously Titans are not supposed to be the most agile yeah. class. Yes. And it's just like... Maybe you guys are moving a little too fast. We're going to tone that down a little bit. Dude, Titans get such good-looking armor. I thought they were going to look not that cool when they actually get there. Oh, okay. Some of the helmets, like the Mohawks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of them look like the Roman gladiator stuff, too. Um, Brimstone, any enemy that you kill using a Scorch ability will cause them to explode. I actually have that. So now you can melee people in the air, and they'll explode. Cool. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. If only we had theater mode. I know. One day, man. Destiny 2, like you pointed out. <laughs> All the stuff we want. Uh, weapon changes. This is really the backbone of this, this patch, by the way. They fixed an issue uh, related to quick weapon swapping. Don't know what that means, but here's the big deal. Auto rifles. Their base damage has been decreased by 2%. Reduced precision damage multiplier from 1.5 to 1.25. The precision, precision damage multiplier is essentially the bonus you get for headshots. So you're seeing a pretty significant significant damage nerf there. And then the stability decreased by 4 to 17%, and it's driven by the stat value of the weapon itself. So, Yeah, they don't want laser beam auto rifles anymore. Yeah. Like, so, you know, they're just... They're seeing that, you know, auto rifles are still a little bit dominant, so they just want to adjust the damage to, you know, make every primary a little bit more even. Yeah. If you were a listener of DTS about three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, the dev notes came out talking how they want to decrease auto rifles and make scouts more potent and also make shotguns less effective. The next weapon up is the hand cannons. Their in-air accuracy has now been increased. Are you happy about this, Mr. Hunter? Yes, absolutely, because I like to do jump shots. <laughs> you, your Michael Jordan like skills are going to go up through the roof. I got to get those 360 no-scope jump shots from across the map. Oh, Nosk, yo, with my jetpack, dog. <laughs> it's funny because all the COD Advanced Warfare sniping like videos have come out. They've been able to play at Eurogamer, and some of the big YouTubers are putting out their like videos. And it's hysterical because they're like, with all these jetpacks and tall buildings, like that was literally one of the things that guy was excited about who came back from playing it at Eurogamer. He was a trick shotter. He's like, yeah, the maps have a lot of tall buildings. And I had to sit there and think for a second. I'm like... What does that matter? And then, like, the whole video is him, like, jumping off buildings, trying to do the 360s, and I'm like, that's oh, why man. it matters. Phase clan, let's go. He was a phase clan, dude, too. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway, scout rifles. Base damage increased by 6%. Damage versus combatants increased by 6 to 25% based on the tier of your weapon and improved target acquisition. Plus, tier, on, tier of the weapon or tier of the enemies? Uh, probably both. It's probably okay. like a combination of your weapon versus their armor kind of thing. Because damage versus combatants increased. So I would imagine the game does the math there. Uh, improved target acquisition plus additional recoil tuning. I think um, improved target acquisition means more auto-aim. <laughs> like, yeah, that would make sense. I mean, that I, I see it being that. And then additional recoil tuning probably means less recoil. So they just worded it funny are you switching man are you gonna go to the uh no. vanguard guy and buy a scout i still haven't found the hawk moon hand cannon but i'm i'm, I'm still gonna use the hand cannons because they the reason i do that is because they one shot most pve enemies and i mainly play pve and it's just like i don't have to waste as much ammo yeah i went into the game this morning I was doing a public event so i didn't get more than probably 18 seconds worth of testing <laughs> So I can't give any detailed feedback, but I have. Uh, the scouts do feel a little different. Um, the auto rifles do feel a little bit different. Same punch that my auto rifle had. 
But I think I'm switching. I think I'm going to try and level up a really Gucci scout rifle, go buy something from the Vanguard Quartermaster. And I think PvP is really where you're going to notice these changes. In PvE, unless you're doing the hard mode raid, I don't think you should really be worrying about switching your weapon. But definitely in PvP, if you're a Crucible player, you'll want to know about this. Because scout rifles at this point are going to be just monstrous. Like, 6% damage increase is fairly significant when they already did quite a bit of damage for headshots. So, it's my two yeah, cents. I think there's a little bit of controversy about this too. Yeah. Um, PvE versus PvP players. Like, they're nerfing these weapons and buffing these weapons because they're not doing well in the PvP. Yeah. But it does affect the PvE players as well, and people are a little bit angry that, you know, PvE is getting nerfed because the weapons are so good in PvP, and I think that there should be different weapon stats for each environment. Yeah. But it's it's not apparent that they're doing that here, so it is it is a little bit of a concern for people who mainly play the PvE, so... I can understand that. At the same time, I think one of the benefits that I like is the fact that they don't change the weapons that dramatically between player versus enemy and PvP. I think that's kind of one of like Destiny's nice strong suits is the gun generally feels similar, um, depending on where you're playing or whatnot. But I can also understand if you've got just such an amazing auto that you've spent a bunch of marks on. But then again, like this is a way to stay involved in the game and not just get stagnant and playing one single thing. They've always said that Destiny is not about having one singular setup and using that forever. There's multiple ways to get to the end point. So, shotguns decrease the base damage at maximum range by 20%. Shot package perk now has a slightly wider cone of fire and the rangefinder and shot package perks are now mutually exclusive. So you can pick one or the other. You can't do range finder and shot package together. Basically, shotguns were doing way too much damage at long range. <laughs> That's it. Like, I think that Deej comment of a shotgun to the face stops everything is taken a little bit too far. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, shotguns are supposed to be close quarters, or, and they were just doing too much damage at mid to long range. Yep. The Vex Mythoclast, I doubt there's any listeners who even have this gun, but if you do, sorry, your base damage has been decreased by 34%. Increased precision damage multiplier from 1.25 to 1.5. So they gave a headshot bonus of a little bit, but 34%. Sorry, guys. It's not the most coveted weapon in the game anymore. So The Pocket Infinity, which is another one of the high-end exotic weapons, Enhanced battery perk now has been replaced with the speed reload perk. Again, I think like maybe 1% of our listeners care about this because it's really hard to get the mythoclast. Like, well, I mean, victims of these weapons care as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. I think course. the Vex mythoclast nerf is huge. That's a third of its damage gone. Yep. And, you know, now people are defending it, saying, well, then what's the point of having this super rare weapon that, you know, 1% of the population can get because they have to complete the raid on hard mode? You know, there's not much incentive for them to actually try and obtain this weapon now because the damage was nerfed so significantly. Yeah. So it's like people were complaining it was too powerful, and now people are saying, well, now it's not. It doesn't carry enough weight, you know, it doesn't have that reputation of being this overpowered beast anymore, so what's the point of having it? So, yeah. it's give and take, you know, people are never satisfied. With a game like I this. I do understand, you know, yeah. the concerns. With a game like Destiny, there is always going to be an OP setup that gets nerfed, and then a new OP setup comes around. Like, in League... There's always a top tier of champions, a patch goes live, something changes, and then a new character or a new strategy emerges that's really powerful. Am I right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, throughout the year, there's, I think, at least 20 different patches that happen for League, and it's just, that's like 20 different metas, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yep. And it's the same with this. Everybody complaining, there's already new weapons that are being dubbed the the new Mythoclast. Okay, so uh, the rest of the stuff, perks, metal detector fixed a bug that prevents this perk from actually providing additional ammo. Lightweight fixed a bug that allowed additional agility to apply even when a weapon was stowed. Boring stuff. Activities. For strikes, Engram rewards from strikes now appear in the post-game activity summary about stink time. So you can actually see when you finish the strike. Oh, 
and got those engrams instead of having to wait until the next screen, uh, which was kind of a hindrance. And then for the Vault of Glass, uh, during the Templar encounter, the kill volume added to the sniper platforms, uh, or they added kill volume to the sniper platforms to prevent players from sitting on top of them. So no longer can the snipers be stagnant and just mow stuff down. And Relic is now removed and respawned if the holder leaves the playable area. That sounds like a pretty nasty glitch if somebody leaves the area and it's like, oh, the relic's gone. Our raid's done. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a bummer. Uh, that's the hotfix uh, for this week. Iron Banner drama. We didn't talk about this much, but uh, over Skype, I typed it to you a little bit. So this last week, to recap, Iron Banner has been live, and basically it wasn't exactly what we thought. Iron Banner was supposed to be this no-holds-bar, your gear score truly matters, and if a level like two player steps into the arena with you, he's going to get one shot mowed down massively. Well, that's not the case. It looks like 80% skill is what Bungie's like weekly notes have said 20% um, gear score actually mattered. So basically, gear score doesn't matter nearly as much as what we thought. There were videos of people using like level 4 characters who were killing level 28 characters, people with insanely nice gear, which we thought wasn't supposed to happen. The whole idea with Iron Banner is like, look, it's supposed to be my gear score. Newer players are going to be destroyed by the high-end players with sweet gear. Not the case. Everybody felt like it was almost identical to Crucible, myself included. So what is Bungie going to do about this? Well, they say that Lord Saladin will play by different rules next time the Iron Banner returns. They, In their notes this week, one of their developers responded to it saying, look, we did not want like this to be such an intimidating playlist that a level 20 player couldn't compete in which I'm actually, I want it to be that playlist. I want the level 20s to be like, you yeah, need to get better gear before I can come in here. So we made it 80% skill, 20% gear scores. I think players would probably dis like disagree with that when you see level 6 weaponry doing almost <laughs> the same damage as your level 28 weaponry. Maybe I'm crazy. Uh, but basically, it's the first Iron Banner. This is what they said in the notes. And it's going to change, and we're going to do things differently next time. Diddy, your thoughts? That's the benefit of having the rotating playlists or the special events happening, you know, once every month or so, because it's basically like you're play testing for the next time, you know? Mm -hmm. So Bungie is collecting all this information saying, Oh, okay. This is how the community reacts. This is how we can improve it for the next time. So it's not the exact same thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of people were, were anticipating the iron banner to be this super competitive playlist. And it just didn't live up to that hype. Yeah. And, I absolutely think that the Iron Banner should be the best of the best does better than the worst. Yeah. You know? I used that first auto rifle that you got in the very first mission of the campaign. I used that in Crucible until I was like level 18, you know, mm -hmm. until I found a, a better weapon because I really liked the rate of fire. I liked the everything about that weapon, and I loved it in multiplayer. But if I use that in the Iron Banner, I should get smashed against a Vex Mythoclast. Of course. And it's like pre-nerf i mean <laughs> you know it's like the iron banner should you know be the place for people to show off i have this weapon and i'm going to destroy you with it because you can't do anything about it yeah and honestly maybe they should put a level cap or a, a floor in the iron banner like if you're under level 20 you can't play in the iron banner i think that's what they need to do something like that because yep the higher level end game. This should be an end game multiplayer playlist, I think. I agree. Fully agree. I think you could get away with a little disclaimer instead of like just a hard cap, a little disclaimer when you highlight the playlist that says, look, dude, just go home if you're under level <laughs> 24. Just don't even, you know, little, little warning there. I agree. It should be an end game kind of thing. So we'll see how the next one goes. I wanted to read you this stat. This is really cool. This came with our 3.2 million players a day. 470,000 players have completed Vault of Glass on normal. 1.9 million players have attempted it. So out of 2 million players, about 500,000 have completed it on normal. Now, here's the cool part. 200,000 have tried the raid on hard, but only 36,000 players have completed the raid on hard difficulty that is including every console. That's nuts, dude. Only 36,000 people have completed it on hard. I'm just, I'm just doing the math real quick. 
using that calculator, not doing it in your head. Yeah, that is <laughs> less than one percent. There you oh, no, go. No, that is that is one percent oh. of Destiny players. Yep. Like total, I did the three point two million players. Yeah. And then I did the thirty six thousand. That's one percent. Have completed, if you completed it on hard. It on hard. At, you are the one percent. Well done. Congratulations. There you go. Little round of claps for you. What a cool stat. So it actually is sort of living up to that. And out of two million people who've attempted it. Uh, 470,000 players have completed it on normal. Sadly, I'm not there with you guys, but I'm soon to be. I have, I'm have i almost level 27. I'm like <laughs> one piece of gear away from level 27. And I'll talk about that when we talk about it, sir. Uh, how to access Traitor's Catch. This is another DLC area that people have found on the disc. It's not finished yet. Deej did respond to people finding these DLC areas in the weekly update. And he said, yep. They're there. We want you to explore them. It's cool with us. They're not nearly done. And he pointed something out. The bungee that is making the DLC is not the bungee that made Launch Day Destiny. That's what he said in the notes. So it makes me feel like there are separate teams for the DLCs entirely. And we're going to get to experience whatever they have in store for us. Do you, do you have an issue with this, Diddy? The fact that there's some of these areas now. It's not the complete area, by the way. This is almost the same thing as, like, remember in the beta where we could explore part of the moon, but not all of the moon? Right. It's like that. People are finding little, small, two to three room parts of the DLCs. Nothing more. I don't have a problem with it. Not I mean, mine either. If it's on the disc, we mentioned this last week. It's a placeholder, and then once the DLC goes live, it's you know, it's going to be new content. It's going to add to that area. You know, Bungie wants to have a spot to put that puzzle piece. You know, console so, players just don't get this, man. It's fine. Like a subscription fine. style service is how these games work. Okay, monthly subscriptions is how like companies pay for these constant updates, these like regular tunings and new content being added. Yet you have so many people are like, I can't believe they're charging for DLC in this game. I don't see eye to eye with them because like in WoW, you pay $15 a month. Okay, and you don't get the same level of updates we're getting each month right now. Now, granted, you do get some big things over time, but like, dude. To not have an, a subscription service and to still get the regular updates we get, I just don't I don't follow the people who are mad, the fact that there's going to be DLCs and whatnot. Like, you're getting away a lot cheaper than if there was a 10 or $12 subscription each month to play this game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Zer Glitch. So Zer has this thing where on PlayStation, if you talk to him, change the time of your PlayStation and then talk to him again, you can see... Uh, a range of potential items that he may sell. This is a way for people to sort of get an idea of what his inventory could have, but not what will happen next week exactly. This isn't that big of a deal. It's just mainly for like the completionists and the people who are obsessed with exotic gear. So it's only on PlayStation from what I know. And Zer the Jerk this week, his Warlock piece, I have enough coins to buy something. I wanted to buy a helmet or gauntlets from him. It was a chess piece for the Warlock dude, and it was like... <laughs> pvp and void walker and i'm mainly pve and Sunsinger. so sadly i'll have to wait until next week do you have exotics yet no oh my goodness i'm still rocking the one legendary machine gun that's it you got, we gotta get you more purples well i mean you know i'm stubborn and i don't want to buy them so that's why i'm so far behind you i know? have not but seen purples dropping lately by the way i guess i have to I think <laughs> I you guess do. I have to buy one. I'm it's probably gonna happen pretty soon. So, you know. Just keep an eye, man. Dotto does Destiny each week, like talks about each of the gear pieces on his channel, like Friday when it comes out. And since he has like a ton of experience with exotics, like his collection is kind of disgusting when you see how beautiful it is. Like he talks about what gear works, he goes through the upgrades and it's like this would be great for this, for this, for this. It's a good way not to waste your coins. So I've been watching that. I didn't waste my coins this week. Our last piece of news is a rumored uh, third subclass. There is this is just a rumor, by the way. Some supposed shadow player has gotten to try the DLCs and says that there is a third subclass coming to each of the characters in the DLC. The link's going to be in the show notes. I have no interest in reading like the descriptions he puts of each of the, the third subclasses because this is just could be pure speculation. Thoughts? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's three different weapon damage types, and the subclasses we have so far correlate to two of the three, and makes sense that there's going to be a third one to mm -hmm. correlate to that last one that we don't have. It came 
live from Twitter. We had a lot of nice tweets this week from you guys, and we're going to go through that. Some of the questions that you asked are lovely. We love when we get that kind of feedback. I do want to bring up at Dark Lord Kamul. Um, awesome show, but you forgot me. I completed the bounty too. Still keep up the great work. You did send us that on Twitter. I'm sorry I didn't include you last week. Congratulations. You have, you know, achieved wall of fame like our other bros. It's easy for us to miss, by the way. Like when we record this show is Tuesday morning. So sometimes your tweets get to us after we've recorded the show. Just remember that. Okay. I'm trying to find where it is, where it is, where it is. Somebody asked us about in game, like clan matchmaking and I forgot where it is. I think he meant in-game clan interface, so yes. you can access your clan yes. in Destiny instead of just on Bungie.net. I think that would be awesome. Didn't Halo 2 have something like that? Yes, they did. You could like, see your you clan would... in-game, and that was exactly. insane, the fact that that happened back then, but we can't do that now. Exactly, and if you're not necessarily friends with them on Xbox or PlayStation, you can see who's online and be like, hey let's go do the raid or something you know and i would love to see because i don't i'm like i don't want to add everybody to my friends list i'm sorry i'm not gonna hurt i'm not here to like hurt your feelings but like seriously oh i found it at g duerson i think destiny the game needs in-game clan interfacing so it's easier for clan mates to link up for raids what do you think absolutely yes please like so what's the point if you have to just go on to bungie.net anyway like i love you guys on our clan you should check it out, by the way, if you're a new listener, Destiny the Show Clan. We have a link in the description below. Join it. There's a lot of people looking for Vault of Glass, but it'd be so much easier if I could just see you in the freaking dashboard. What would be cool is like if I could actually see your name, Diddy. I don't think we'd ever get to that point, though, because PlayStation and Xbox just don't play. They don't play nice. <laughs> they don't like each other. Uh, at Anthony Christ, maybe you could talk about the factions in Destiny such as Dead Orbit. So there are three factions in Destiny, Future War Cult, Dead Orbit, and New Monarchy. You can maybe include Crucible and Vanguard in that, but not really. Future War Cult, their gear focuses on intellect and discipline. Dead Orbit, their gear focuses on strength and discipline. And New Monarchy, Monarchy's gear focuses on intellect and strength. I have no interest in talking about the lore. You can go to destinypedia.com. Sorry, I just think that like 3% of the listeners actually care to know about the future war cult is dedicated to returning the golden era. Like, no. <laughs> I didn't even read the grimoire cards, so I'm probably bad. At Drew Pancake asks, asks us, do you think it would be suitable for a leaving penalty for the Iron Banner? Purposely leaving, not connection drop. So do, should there be a punishment? Um... I don't know how they would implement something like that. Maybe I, I can't even know because there's not any ranks in the Iron Banner. Yeah. So like you can't. Okay. So Iron Banner like marks or reputation. If you lose reputation for leaving, that mm -hmm. would make sense. Yeah. Um, yes, I think there should be some type of penalty because, you know, even if you're getting stomped, you should realize why because the enemy has better gear and. Obviously, I know that's not the case right now because, you know, the Iron Banner was 80% 80, 80 skill, 20% weapon stats. Yeah. But that's going to be improved for a future update. So um, I definitely think if there was a penalty for leaving, it would incentivize players to stay in the lobby because I saw a screen cap on the Destiny subreddit of, like, this is the typical Iron Banner, and it was, like, six <laughs> players in a party against one person because everybody yeah. else left. Yeah. You know, and that's just unfair for that one person. You know, he can try as hard as he can, but if he's just outclassed and it's the Iron Banner, you know, he's not going to stand a chance. And that's just not fun for anybody. I don't think there's big party matchmaking. I've read and watched videos about this. When people go in full party of six, they can still get matched up against a full lobby of like solo players. And I don't, one of the best playlists ever in Call of Duty is, I can't remember the name, but it's like individual. Essentially, no parties. It's Team Slayer or whatever game types it is, but there are no parties. It's just all people going in without anybody. I, yeah. Games need that, dude, because the coordination and benefit you get of having a full party of six, we've played Halo long enough. How many lobbies of four? Like, all night long, you just ruin kids' dreams most of the time. 
Yeah, I remember Halo 3 back in the day um, when on Bungie Day, you know, they said, if you find us in matchmaking, you will give you recon. And they were in a party of four, and they had the party of four matchmaking system in Halo 3. So if you weren't in a party of four, you weren't going to be up against Bungie, you know? And that was just yeah. like, I have to be in a party of four. So I found three other guys. We did that, and we never actually did, found them. But still, didn't... big party matchmaking would benefit the crucible multiplayer i think absolutely it happened one time in reach for me and i still have the game where i played the bungee people we won i don't think they were like their main crew these guys had to be artists <laughs> or something because it wasn't that burly of a like a victory but i enjoyed it nonetheless uh at laura dora agree with you guys about the raid matchmaking should add it for the weekly strikes too it sucks that it's not in there already so last week we asked you for your feedback regarding uh, raid matchmaking and looks like most of you all have agreed with us I'm trying to scroll up there's one more person who had brought it up uh drew pancake again i think that matchmaking on raids will be good but they should wait to do so until voice communication comes out and at mystook really enjoying the show on this side of the pond possibly not your normal demographic but loving the game thanks we appreciate our listeners and uh, at patrick sultan want to know if we offer soundcloud or any other options for non-apple users yes we do you can check our site there's an rss feed for the show for anybody who's anti itunes <sighs> get over yourselves i'm sorry <laughs> there's an rss feed for you people let's talk about the bounty of this week or last week actually i am brandon Cates. sent us a picture of the is it the icebreaker that sniper that ninja got uh, I think so. It is a sweet looking sniper. I don't think it needs ammo. I think it charges up is how it works. Like I was watching That's Ninja's awesome. video. Yeah, it charges. So you don't have to actually get like green ammo to use it, which I thought was ridiculously cool. Uh, at Master1997 sent us a picture of his gear. He has a hunter cape and he has the million million armor shader as well as the emblem that you get from Iron Banner. That cape looks so good, dude. Did you get your gear? Did you get your Iron Banner gear? I, no, I didn't. Not didn't this think time. So. That's okay. And Dan the Assassinator sent us in a full set of Iron Banner gear. You are sassy. You're like way committed to this game. I applaud Go you. Go to school. Go to work. <laughs> I can't believe it. You, Do something else. Look at at. It looks awesome, <laughs> dude. He's got a fully decked out hunter. This is your ghost, Miranda. And when I'm not out helping Guardians, I'm listening to Destiny the Show. And now we're going to do a really fast topic because we're pretty much out of time today. So, what game types do we think we should have added to the game? Diddy, what do you think should be added? Capture the Flag, Team Doubles, and Team Snipers. Oh, I agree fully. CTF, 2v2, I Want Forge, which isn't a game type. And Private Matches haven't shown up yet, but they're still on their way. That's our topic for today. There we go. Diddy, where can people find your content? Twitch.tv slash Diddy underscore, that's D-I-T-T-Y underscore, and then YouTube.com slash Wooshness with three O's. Boom. How's the Shadow of Mordor going? It's awesome. I have rendered out all of my recorded sessions, and I have 23 recorded parts so far. I am going to post part 12 today. It's a long game. I'm glad to see like that it's got enough content in there. Come to Steam sale. I'm only I'm only like twelve percent or not twelve twenty percent into it too, Jeez. so it's it's fun. It's like Assassin's Creed. Anyway, I'm off topic. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, go to <laughs> destinytheshow.com for regular posts and updates and all the links from today's show. Email destinytheshow at gmail dot com. We check it like once a week, maybe. Follow at destinytheshow on Twitter. You can follow me at BBK Dragoon. Thanks for listening. Have a good week, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>